Hello. Hello, everyone. Hi. Uh, hello, Ivan. Hello, Anton. And welcome hello. again. Uh, let's close this one. Uh, again, for uh, let's wait a little bit more for like, like we did on last weekend. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, just maybe a little bit, two minutes, maybe three minutes. Then we will start. Great. For the next webinar. Uh, who has been already watching? We already uh, noted, but please pay attention to your video quality on YouTube because automatic quality will will be like a, a really bad screen resolution. So it's better that you change it manually. Uh, the webinar is going to be recorded and also we are going to share the working files after the webinar on the description. Please uh, visit the YouTube video again to get the description, uh, to get the files from the description side. In the meantime, uh, I think for, for, for at least the next one, two minutes, it would be better that you explain, you, uh, you describe that what we are going to do and what we are going to teach. Sure. Okay, so as you guys already probably know, this uh, this uh, workshop, uh, this webinar series is just a preparation for the uh, three workshops which are going to take place uh, later on this month. And uh, the aim of these webinars is actually to prepare you for those workshops to explain the basics of the uh, sub D modeling with uh, Grasshopper, uh, with sub D Rhino tools modeling with Grasshopper, and. Uh, explain you the basics and essentials of mesh topology, of uh, data management, data trees, so that uh, during these workshops we can uh, move uh, forward, move, move further, we can uh, concentrate mainly on the design and on um, uh, the detailing of uh, your projects and uh, not spend time on explaining the basics. So that's the, the idea and today's workshop will concentrate mainly on the data management data trees creation of patterns uh, which uh, is uh, widely used for the facades for uh, shells for grid shells and so on and uh, to see how we can apply sub d tools to um to create these designs so yeah i think that's pretty much it mm -hmm. and for the okay. word yeah, yeah, regarding yeah. the workshops, uh, the first one will be concentrating on the design development. We will uh, we will select the, the difference between that workshop and our current webinar is that for that workshop we will select a particular site, a particular project, and we will be developing a a project for uh, for the uh, building which uh, will be created with uh, sub D tools. The second workshop will concentrate on uh, detailed design, basically preparing the more detailed uh, connections, facade panels, uh, columns, or any other element that we will select. And the final workshop, the third one, will be concentrating on the digital fabrication aspect of it. So we will be actually fabricating this uh, final piece. The files for fabrication will be prepared remotely online, and we will actually show you how to do this. And the final result will be implemented uh, by us. And uh, like, we will show how, how it will be done. So yeah, that's that's sure. it, I think. Pretty much everything. Also, we are going to collect the questions like we did on the on the on the previous one. Uh, if there will be any time in the middle, I will ask you. Uh, otherwise, we are going to try to reply them in at the end of the webinar. Yeah, great. By the way, uh, Mustafa, do we have any questions from the previous? Uh, webinar left mm, not really i think when uh, we record things that questions automatically be uh, solved because when you watch it on the <laughs> second time you will i mean you will get your reply mostly okay it's still good that you uh, put your questions in the comments or in the chat during the webinar uh, so uh, we will try to re reply to them after the webinar or even uh, on even the during yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if you are ready, I can actually put your screen on on the stream, Ivan. Yep. Sure. Okay. Let's just give me a second. Okay. Um, yeah. Let's start 
and if, if any any situation occurs i will be here sure great thank you thank you mustafa thank yeah. you uh, yeah. thanks to everyone let's let's start this uh, this webinar so it's the second part as we have already mentioned and uh, it's going to mainly concentrate on the data management so just a couple of words about us. Uh, well, Mustafa is also uh, is uh, the organizer of this workshop. He represents Rhino Center. Maybe you want to tell a couple of words about you as well. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, maybe it's it's better that there will be new attendance. Yeah. Uh, so we are the organizer for the for the webinar uh, together with the engineering group. Uh, we are actually an authorized Rhino. Uh, training center and also a rhino reseller in, in based in istanbul uh, for now we are making organizing these kind of trainings and uh, we are planning to make more of it uh, i think if, if it, it will be better that if you visit our website to see what's actually we are doing and you will get hands-on on on the older versions of any webinars uh, yeah that's all for us Ivan. great thanks thank you uh, thank you. Yeah, we'll keep uh, it short about ourselves as well. We are uh, uh, we are architects with uh, both professional and academic experience. We work at uh, the same company. We used to teach in uh, the same university. Now we are teaching in different universities and also at the online platform Ingeneric. Uh, we have uh, we basically what we are doing we are doing parametric design and we provide parametric design and digital fabrication services. We collaborate with industries and companies. Uh, we um, conduct online education and consulting sessions. And finally, we accumulate and share the skills and knowledge about parametric design, parametric architecture, like we are doing it now. And uh, yeah, we also have a website and uh, the Instagram profile, which you can, which you are welcome to check. We post there our projects and the projects of our students and uh, the companies we collaborate with. Uh, having said that, that's it. Uh, let's go ahead and let's um, move on with the with the workshop. As you can see here, this is the uh, the dates of these workshops. They might change, but um, we will we will announce it in uh, in advance. The first webinar has been conducted last week, and uh, today is uh, the webinar number two, which concentrates on patterns and data management. So, let's uh, before we start, let's uh, actually talk a little bit about terminology so that we understand each other, and uh, it will be easier for you to follow the uh, explanation of the code. Uh, this terminology is related to the sub-D uh, geometry from Rhino and also to the data management. So first is first term we're going to use a lot is the edge loops. Basically, edge, edge loops is, um, as you can see here, the definition. I will not uh, repeat it. But the idea is that we, need, we always need to take care of the edge loops when we work with the sub-D. The second uh, term is the base mesh, which is basically the initial geometry from which you generate your sub-D. And we are going to work a lot with the base mesh deformation, base mesh creation, and so on. And it's very important to have a clean and uh, good uh, manifold, uh, yeah, manifold uh, base mesh. Um, then uh, the term hard edges, we apply it to the edges of a sub-D, which are not, of course, they are not uh, creases, they are not sharp, but they are very, very close to being sharp. They have a very small fillet. And this is actually uh, something which is applied a lot in industrial design, in architecture, for facade details, and so on. That's why it's important to, basically, we are going to show how to create them. And we actually showed this uh, process during our first webinar, so please uh, check it out. Because today we are going to mainly talk about the data manipulation. The second term is kind of related to the to the to the previous one. Uh, sorry, the next term is related to the previous one, which is the holding edges or support loops. Uh, the naked edges you probably already know. It's the edges which uh, edge which has only one adjacent phase of in in a mesh, uh, which is also important for us to to um, preserve the structure of our sub D and to um, manipulate it. And then we get to the to the data structures. So data structure is basically different, it includes different types of data organization. It can be list or it can be a tree, which is technically a list of lists, if we're talking about Grasshopper. The data list is an ordered collection of data, which you probably already know, but it's not its not necessarily a sorted collection of data, it's just ordered collection of data. And, the, and it has no hierarchy, basically. And data tree actually is a hierarchical uh, structure for storing data in nested lists. So it's exactly like the list of lists, if we can give this analogy. Uh, for the geometry which we're going to work with, we're 
although we call the workshop sub D and we will, the, this is the main focal point of our, uh, our webinar, uh, we're still going to use uh, NURBS and mesh geometry where needed just to take benefit of uh, these uh, types of geometry because they all have different benefits like NURBS is very precise, mesh is very lightweight and sub D kind of combines them both, but it requires both of these types of geometry to be created. So this is the idea. Uh, oh, yeah, just uh, to repeat uh, this thing we already know is that sub D in Rhino, it's different from sub D in uh, many different um, polygonal uh, modeling uh, tools, like 3D Max, for example, where sub D is just uh, increasing the subdivision of the existing mesh structure to increase the number of polygons. But in Rhino, sub D is, um, uh, is um, a high precision spline based surface or poly surface. So that's the, that's the main difference. And that's the difference that makes SubD in Rhino so good. Uh, why are we using SubD? Well, not only because we like the shape, although it's really nice, but the main reason for using SubD is actually when applying NURBS becomes topologically difficult or even impossible, uh, we can use SubD. Also, it allows to create highly accurate and quickly editable organic shapes. Basically, that's the aesthetical aspect of uh, the process. And the most important thing is that it can be converted directly to manufacturable solids. So you can create a sub-D model, you can convert it to nerves, then you can make structural analysis, you can uh, cut it, you can CNC mill it, you can reprint it and do any other things uh, you want. Uh, finally, this, this final point is not going to be covered with this uh, webinar, but it's still an important one, that uh, sub-D2 can be applied for reverse engineering of 3D scans and so on. Uh, the main application of sub-D in architecture, I mean, this is this is kind of the image that we were uh, inspired by while preparing the geometry for today's session. This is the Mandarin Oriental Hotel uh, by Zaha Hadid Architects, which was done with um, something similar to, to what we're going to show. And, uh, yeah, that's, that's it. Let's go, uh, let's talk about the goals of today's webinar. As already mentioned before, uh, we're going to prepare you for a series of hands-on workshops in uh, sub modeling. And during today's workshop, we are going to learn how to use data tree management in order to achieve geometrical patterns on facades or shells developed with sub tools. Finally, we're going to master the skill of achieving complexity from very simple basic forms. This is uh, probably the most important uh, slide of today's presentation, which shows you the workflow with uh, sub-D workflow in Grasshopper that we elaborated. It starts very simple from creating the base, base NURBS curves for the shape. Then we uh, start uh, to create the base mesh from uh, these curves and um, apply the modificators, which are needed to create creases or hard edges or uh, smooth edges and so on. Then we switch to meshes, so we convert the resulting NURBS geometry to the simple meshes. We apply different patterns. We use something very similar to a stencil when we apply these patterns to different layers of our sub D envelope or facade. We bridge these uh, layers together uh, if necessary. We join them and finally we apply the sub D tool uh, to this mesh in order to create the sub D geometry. And in the end, if uh, we're willing to actually fabricate or manufacture this uh, final geometry, we just convert it directly to NURBS and receive a manufacturable uh, shape that can be done. Um, yeah. These are the key principles of sub-D modeling. We were uh, talking about all of them uh, in more details uh, during our previous workshop and uh, sorry, webinar. And today we're going to cover mainly the last aspect of it, which is talking about the data structures. Basically, we need to keep our data structured and uh, use it in order to control our geometry or our architecture. As you can see here and in this uh, reference image created by Daniel Piker, who is, um, uh, yeah, you can see it here. Um, we need to keep our structure very clear and very clean. And these mesh, mesh uh, strips actually show it very very um, correctly. And let's talk about how are we going, well, what are the, the basic rules of uh, data management and data structures? So first of all, uh, I would not recommend you to ever flatten your data structure unless you absolutely have to, because uh, flattening 
destroys all the data structure it had before and it's sometimes it's very hard to get it back so it's better to always keep your data organized in a tree but uh, then you need to keep the at the same time you need to keep the minimum sufficient number of figures in your data paths you know this sequence of zero one two three so on uh, you need to have as, as as few numbers as possible, but at the same time, the amount of these numbers should be sufficient to have a complete control of your data structure. And finally, uh, the most important one, it's uh, not like a rule, but it's more like a recommendation, that at any point of the process, I recommend you to understand what are you doing and have a clear impression of uh, your data structure. Like, what are you doing, why, and how to achieve the desired result when to flatten, when to graph, when to simplify, and so on. Uh, having said that, I think uh, that's pretty much it with the presentation. Let's uh, switch to the hands-on experience. Let's start, um, let me share the, um, yeah, the Rhino interface. And let's go ahead, let's start with our, with our exercise. So uh, first of all, let me start let me place the bifocals here so that we can actually, at any point of the process, we can see what, which component am I using. Uh, also, um, I will, will try to go not too fast so that those of you who are willing to repeat after me can actually do this. Uh, but at the same time, I encourage you to, if you have any questions or any doubts, to re-watch the video after this webinar if you have any questions or actually put the questions in the chat so we can respond to them in real time and yeah let's move ahead let's go ahead uh, so today we're going to develop a sh shell uh, and let's start developing the shell using the data trees actually i'm going to start with a point as always i'm, I'm trying not to use um, rhino any any initial rhino geometry unless i have to in this case, we can uh, probably do everything uh, completely parametric and start from crossover directly. And uh, I'm going to start creating multiple points at the same time. I want to create uh, my shell from this point. How am I going to do this? Well, let's let's uh, actually start. Uh, let's see. Uh, I'm going to create um, multiple curves uh, from which I'm going to generate this shell. So I'm going to start from series. Uh, I'm going to set a step at five. The starting point will be zero and the count will be, let's say, 12 for the moment. This is basically the generation of the control points for the curves that will be used to generate this shell. As you can see, we have this uh, kind of, well, maybe I need to make it a bit larger. Let's see, I'm going to make 18 points. Yeah, that's good. Maybe even more because uh, actually this number of points will define how many, how many, how much precision, how how complex will our shell be. Uh, then I also need to create um, three curves in y direction, right? And also I need to make these curves different in uh, in z direction. So as I need three curves for this uh, geometry, I will probably need to use the entwine component, which allows me to create to actually assemble my tree. By, uh, by by my hands. So I'm going to just connect this to 0, 0, same uh, series to 0 and 1, and for, uh, sorry, to 0 and 2, and for 0 and 1, I'm going to use uh, another series with the same number, with the same count. The count is important that we use the same number, but for this step, I'm going to use something like 5.4, maybe. Now let's see. Let's connect it directly to X. So as you can see, we generate three branches with three different sets of points. Yeah? We need to also generate different uh, Y coordinates for these, uh, for these points. And now I'm going to, going to make some, let's say, curved curves. I will need to use a graph mapper. So I'm going to, to use a Bezier, which will actually define the shape of, of, of the shell. Let's let's make it um, something like this for the moment. Sorry, like this. Maybe let's put it up. Let's see. And let's use the range. Uh, so this is now we have to generate one value, one y value for each 
x value, right? So we need to have the same number of, of uh, values here. And in order to get the same number of values here, I need to right click and say minus, uh, x minus one. And I connect it here using the remap. And I'm remapping these values uh, to, yeah, to generate something using the bounds component to get the bounds of this graph, minimum and maximum values. And I'm going to use the constraint in in order to generate the, um, uh, like, the width of this shell. So let, let it be something like, uh, I don't know, let's, let's put it at 36 for the moment. Uh, the, 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 the minimum value will be something like 9, for example. Or maybe, maybe, maybe I will make it larger, actually. I think it, it has to be a lot larger. I need to assemble another tree for y coordinates, right? Because uh, we need to have uh, two data trees with absolutely matching structures for x and for y, right? And 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 for z as well. So I'm going just to copy these entwined components. I'm going to connect the remap numbers to zero zero and zero two. For zero one, I need to connect only one slider, which is going to be zero because the middle axis of my shell doesn't need to move at all. You see? And then one more important thing is that the zero, uh, zero 02, this path has to be negative. So that uh, uh, this point, they are mirrored, you know, like, like this, yeah. So that now our shell is, um, I mean, our initial geometry can be converted into this shell. As I mentioned before, I'm going to increase the minimum uh, minimum value here, which is going to be 15. And I'm also going to play a bit with this uh, shape. Maybe maybe we can also use the... Actually, it doesn't matter. We can we can use any anything, any graph. Uh, maybe something like this, I don't know. For example, uh, it doesn't matter that much. At this point, it's not, not that important. We can always uh, play a bit more with it. Maybe I can make it a bit thinner. Yeah, like this. Okay, this looks good to me for the moment. Now it's time to create the same thing for the X, for the Z axis. And for the Z axis, we need to use um, basically need to use two graph mappers. I'm going to copy this thing completely. I'm going to use the same number. This this slider. Let's actually drag it here. Let's group it. Uh, make it as a bob. I'm going to print it and say uh, the number. OK, looks good to me. Let's connect it to Z for the moment, and let's see how it looks. So OK, I need to remove negative from here first. Yeah. And as you can see, this is the shape we, we get, which is not bad, but very far from what I'm trying to achieve either. First of all, I'm going to make uh, something like, I'm going to put, I'm going to put it at zero, the minimum uh, parameter at zero, and then I'm going to make something like this. Yeah, and something like that. Okay, looks, looks not bad to me. Maybe I'm going to still to increase this uh, distance here to something like 18. Yeah, and maybe do something like that. Okay. Uh, yeah, and then I need to move the, the, the I want this this uh, part to be the, the, the highest here. So let me let me actually play a bit more with this thing and uh, yeah, maybe I'm gonna do something like that. Yeah, actually I like this. I think this is much better. Yeah, okay, looks good to me. I'm going to make the middle one, uh, the middle curve, the highest out of all of them. So I'm going to copy this this part, only this part, yeah. I'm going to connect it to zero uh, semicolon one, which is the three path number one, right? One. And I'm going to, with this graph, first of all, I'm going to increase the minimum value to something like 
uh, let's say, I don't know, something like this, maybe 27 should be fine. And the highest point is something like 39, maybe should be fine. I think something like this will work, yeah. Great, and after that, uh, we just need to generate the surface from this, or uh, not a surface, actually a sequence of curves, but let me just show you how we generate surface and then uh, we'll do something else. So I'm going to use the entire plate, and as you can see, use the, the, the component, which is uh, one of the most important uh, components while working with data trees, which is called from UR. Why is, it, why is it important? Because uh, for us as architects, it's very difficult to work with numbers because we are visual people in most cases. And for us, it's better to work with graphical representation. This component gives us the, it draws a tree for us. It shows us the data structure in a graphical way. And uh, if we don't want, uh, if we want to have more uh, precise data, we can just right click and select the text, text, textual uh, representation. So now we have three branches consisting of 24 uh, items each. Uh, I want to make, uh, instead of having three branches of 24 items each, I want to have 24 branches of three items each, so I can create these arches and to build a surface from them. We will use a tool which is called Flip Matrix, which actually does exactly this. It flips this number with this number, right? So now, that if we compare it with, uh, with the flip data, we have uh, data with 24 branches, three items long each. This is like the basic tool for uh, data tree manipulation. And I'm going to connect this flip thing to interpolate. And you see immediately we get this kind of sequence of curves, yeah? Okay, great. So let's uh, let's move on and let's um, let's actually use maybe another tool. I don't know which, which, will, which one will give a better result, which is the NURBS curve. Sometimes I prefer this one, sometimes, uh, well, I don't know. I think interp interpolate uh, works much better in this case. Yeah, sure, let, let's just keep uh, the interpolated one. Okay, so now we have these curves interpolated. I'm going to, to play a little bit with this Z or just, uh, just to make the shape look a bit nicer. Oh, well, I think it's already not bad. This is, uh -huh, okay, so let's try something like that. Yeah, I think something like this uh, looks uh, probably the most, uh, the most um, convincing to me. Like this and maybe like that, so maybe a bit more. But whatever, we can play with this code as long as we want, but the aim is uh, to show you how, how to, to move forward. So. Uh, I'm going to hide this plane because I don't need it anymore. I'm already happy with the scale that we have. And let's uh, let's actually start generating our base mesh because for the sub D we need uh, our base mesh and we actually need our base mesh in uh, multiple layers so that we can create uh, multiple um, uh, multiple uh, layers so we can create the shell, the, the columns, the, the uh, transverse uh, uh, connections and so on. Uh, so let's let's go ahead and let's uh, offset all these curves uh, several times. In this particular case, we are going to work with three layers, uh, and that's why we need uh, to generate three distances for each curve, right? So now we have each curve now is a se separate branch. So we have twenty-four branches consisting of one curve each, right? Let's let's use the merge component to, or maybe you can use entwine even. We need, um, we need to have three layers. We have four or as many as we want. This this number is not related to this number at all. It's just the coincidence that we're using three layers. We can use two or four or as many as we want. So for the offset, I'm going to set something like uh, let's say 1.2 with, with with a negative sign. So that this base curves that we generated, uh, these base curves that we just that we have just generated, they work as the central. If I can give this analogy, we are using them as an axis. You know, like an axis of a wall. You always have the middle um, curve or middle ax axis with uh, from which you do the offset in both directions. In you do this in construction. So I'm going to basically do the same uh, here. 
So I'm going to make the offset of the first layer is going to be negative. The second layer is going to be zero because I don't want to move it anywhere from the neutral axis. And the second layer can be, uh, let's say, 1.8 or any other value. Let's see if it works good. Um, okay, one more thing is that, uh, yeah, sorry, my bad. We don't need to use entwine because we need to, you need to use merge because we need to generate uh, three values for each curve. Yeah, so we need them all to be in one list. You see? So now we generate this. Yeah. Actually, I'm not. I'm still not sure about this uh, geometry because actually, we actually it 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 makes the offset in world x y plane, but we need each curve to be offset in each particular plane, right? So we need to test curves for planarity, and we are planar because they are uh, they are uh, interpolated through three points. You see, so each of them has uh, its own plane, and we just need to connect these planes the second output to here, yeah, and I hide it. So now, as you can see, they are offset correctly. Yeah, we have three layers. Uh, I actually want to, to decrease the, the Y uh, a little bit here. Just a second, just uh, here. Yes, I want to make it start from... Uh, Sorry, actually not Y, but I want to, yeah, here I want to do the, uh, yeah, I want to do 5.2, a bit less. Okay, cool. Uh, let's move on. Let's, let's actually start dividing our curves uh, to generate our base uh, quad mesh, because quad mesh is very important for, for the correct, uh, uh, mesh topology. Uh, you can check. You can check. Like, if, if you are familiar with polygonal modeling, and if if you have checked some uh, polygonal may uh, polygonal modeling forums, you know that quad mesh is always better, not only for animation purposes, not only for texturing, but also for for architecture. It's also better than triangular mesh. So, whenever it's possible, let's try to use the quad mesh. And let's uh, let's actually start uh, dividing our our curves into into. Um, yeah, into 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 segments. Into segments. Uh, how am I going to do this? Well, uh, I want to, to evaluate the. Uh, I'm going to divide them in a certain, uh, certain, yeah, a certain number of points. I'm going to use a divide curve, apply it here, and I'm going to apply the same number everywhere. Let's say it's going to be something like 15 for the moment. This number will define our, uh, again, it will be another number which defines the resolution of our mesh, or maybe 18, I don't know. Uh, I think also it's important to, 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 try, uh, to try to keep your mesh as close to a square as possible and also as uniform as possible. And now you see that these, these um, quads, they will be quite close to a, to, a, to a square, to a rectangle, so it's, uh, like, it, it's good enough, let's say. That I'm going to say uh, explode. I'm going to explode all these curves because uh, we need to shut. Uh, basically, we need to shatter them. Actually, I'm going not to explode, but I'm going to shatter uh, these curves. Yeah, and I'm going to use these uh, parameters for these curves. And here you see like, again. Speaking about the da uh, data trees, let's see how how do these uh, trees look like. Here we have data with 72 branches, right? And here, again, we have data with 72 branches. This means that we have matching structure, but the difference is that one of them has branches consisting of one element, the other one has branches consisting of 19 elements, which is absolutely fine for us. Let's connect it here, and let's hide this all. So now there is no difference except Except for that, this uh, this time, uh, instead of having complete NURBS curves, we have uh, segments, right? In each branch, we have 18 segments. And now it's important for us to start creating the a quad mesh quads between these two these layers, right? So how are we going to do this? Well, uh, I mean the idea is pretty simple. We have one segment, and we have another segment from another 
right? Like we have one segment from this curve, another segment from this curve. I mean, the respective segments, which are, uh, which should match, yeah? We just create a surface between two of them and convert it into a simple mesh. And we get this quad, quite simple. But how do we how do we get it from here? Because if you if if we look here, uh, we can just create a panel, or we can create a, actually we can use the param viewer to see this data structure. We see that this data structure is really complex. It's not it's not actually very clear how to you see like like this. It's not very clear how to convert this into a quad mesh. Well, let's let's do the following. Let's uh, first of all let's simplify. When we simplify, we get rid of the extra figures that we had before, right? So now you see we have two zeros at the beginning and at the end, and uh, they are the same for all uh, for all uh, branches. So they basically don't give us any additional information. This was uh, telling that let's keep our paths as short as necessary to have the complete control of the structure, but not longer than that. So it should be as short as possible. Here, we need just two numbers, right? So let's just keep them. Let's simplify the tree and let's get these two numbers uh, here. All right. And now, uh, remember we did the flip matrix before, so that we change the, uh, in, in, the, in the data tree, we basically flip the, the uh, horizontal and vertical direction, right? Now we need to do kind of the reverse thing. And here the time for the param viewer tool. Oh, sorry, not param viewer, but path mapper tool. Okay, I mean it's, it's always time for the for the param viewer, but in this particular case we need the path mapper. The path mapper allows us to conduct any manipulations of the data tree uh, by manipulating these uh, figures from the tree path. Right? So if I right-click on it and if I say create null mapping we will see the data structure of our tree represented by letters, which is A and B. Uh, the thing is very important for the path mapper, right? So you have A, uh, semicomma, B, and you have these brackets, yeah? Very important to respect it. Uh, all right, so let's, let's move on and let's just uh, try to create a structure from which we can generate our quad meshes. Uh, I'm gonna double left click here I'm going to start editing these source and target mappings. Yeah. Let's first of all let's let's create a, uh, another panel here after the path mapper. I suggest to always use panels just in order to to um, to understand what is going on inside your structure. That's like the main recommendation here. You at the point you need to understand what is happening in your structure so that you can manipulate it. So let's let's move on. Let's uh, left click here. And let's uh, let's actually let's actually use the the param viewer as well, yeah. So I connect it after the path mapper and before the path mapper, so that we can actually see how will our structure change. Yeah, like this. For for the moment, it doesn't change at all. But what we need to achieve here, what we're trying to achieve here, is uh, we need to flip. We need to change the the um, this, the indices, and the, um, the number of the branch. Because the number of the branch, like the first, the first figure here, is basically the position, the tree of oh, sorry of the of the curve from left to right. So instead of now now our date is organized like that. It's organized along uh, along um, y axis like that. We need to organize it along x axis. Yeah. So let's let's do this. Let's uh, double left click here and let's add this thing. I'm using normal brackets, not the not the um, I don't know how do you call them, but not the, not not the beautiful ones, but just like regular ones. And I'm going to change the position of A and B, sorry A and I, where I is the index of the element, and A is the first number in the path. So you see that now, if if we compare these these um, uh, these um, param viewers. Uh, I don't know what's happening. But okay. You see that now instead of having data with 72 branches, we have data with 54 branches. Yeah. And if you look here, you see that the number, the length of each branch is different. Yeah. These are the same curves, 
we had before, but now their data structure is different. It's organized differently. So uh, let's, let's just use it because now uh, now each branch, let's actually use a tool that helps you understand what branch are you working with. This tool is called Tree Branch. Surprise, surprise. And it allows us to uh, see which branch we select at the moment. So basically, to understand how our data structure, how our data is structured and organized here. Also, uh, this component goes along with uh, Tree Statistics component, which is uh, the best friend of any Grasshopper user because this component gives you the complete information about your data tree. It's not like a Param Viewer. It gives you the paths, like the exact paths the length of each particular path and the number of these paths, which is the count output here. Yeah? Use the list item component or the, I'm going to connect it to the path and I'm going to start using the slider from zero to, we have 54 branches, I'm going to make a slider from zero to 53. I'm going to connect it to I and I'm going to connect the I to P, which is path. And I'm going to connect this data to T, which is the tree. Yeah. And you see that these, these, um, these uh, segments, which are highlighted in green, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this, yeah. This is our branch, yeah. So it's, it's very, it's very now, now it's very easy and very clear to understand how we can actually generate these mesh, uh, simple meshes, simple like surfaces, which later on will be converted to meshes. So just connecting, it's just using this, uh, just lofting this curve with this curve, this curve with this curve, this curve with this curve, this curve, with this curve and so on. It's, it's important to mention that it's not lofting them all, right? Because in this case, we will get just one single loft. But we need to have a loft between each pair of these curves. Yeah? So uh, let's just do this. Let's, uh, I'm going to move, uh, move this a little bit out. I'm going to get back to the red mode. I'm gonna hide this. This is this this, this connection. I really recommend it. I really recommend you to remember it to use it for uh, checking your data structure to understand where is your branch because sometimes when we have this structure is relatively simple, but still it's quite complex for us to understand how it's organized unless we see the branch, right? So I'm gonna use the shift list component. I'm gonna copy it twice. I'm going to create a separate data container here. Yeah. Uh, and I'm going to start creating these, um, these uh, simple lofts between these two uh, the, the pairs of consecutive curves. Right. So let's connect this here. And let's connect this here. For this shift list, I'm going to use the offset of one which basically means that it moves one item forward. And here I'm going to use the minus one, which means that it's moving uh, one item backward, backwards, right? After that, I also need to make sure that you see that this list is not going to wrap. It's going to be trimmed, right? So now it has one item less than it had before, right? And here as well. The difference is that here, basically, I'm cooling the last item, and here I'm cooling the first item. Yeah? Great. Then I'm, I have to graph them because I need to create a, I need to create pairs. Yeah? So I graph this, I graph this, and if we merge them, if we look at the data structure we have, you see we have branches consisting of two items each. And now we can simply apply loft to it and uh, what is the problem here? Okay, what can be constructed? Why? Uh, no problem. I actually prefer using not loft, but the rule surface in this case. Actually, we can do this because, okay, let's check if we have the same number of elements. Here we have 1,242, 1, which is fine. Okay. Yeah, much better now, you see? Basically, this is the initial geometry which we are going to work with to generate the patterns and convert it into a shell. So, uh, how are we going to proceed? Well, uh, first of all, let's convert it to a simple. Actually, let's not convert it to simple mesh. Should we? 
Yeah, let's do it. Let's convert it to simple mesh. Uh, simple mesh is a. Yeah, by the way, guys, there is a list of plugins we are using in this tutorial. It's it, in this uh, webinar. It's been posted um, below the video. You can find it in the description. So please feel free to visit the Food for Rhino website and download these plugins. If you like, don't see one of the components I'm using, just uh, download the uh, the required plugin. And uh, we will also we will also attach this this code to the to the webinar description, so you will be able to follow it and to download it and use it for your purposes. So, uh, yeah, basically I, I made the simple meshes, and uh, I'm going to simplify it so that we have only three figures for each uh, for each um, yeah, for each uh, path. We have three branches, so it's three, three three figures. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, the first figure represents the position of the of the element from 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 uh, from uh, bottom to top, right? So like this is zero, this is seventeen. The second uh, second figure in the in the in the um, uh, in the branch, uh, so, sorry, in in the path represents the layer, right? So this layer is zero one and two yeah and the third figure in this path actually represents the index of this particular element in this particular branch yeah so technically speaking we can even say trim three to actually remove one one figure from this you see now now we have uh, now we have uh, uh 23 um surfaces sorry 23 meshes in each branch yeah like this so now now this is one branch okay let's stream it for the moment and let's actually start talking about how are we going to generate our patterns uh as you might have already seen in the in the poster i mean we are we are, we are doing a slightly different geometry but it will be the same absolutely the same principle uh so we are going to start uh keeping some of these horizontal strips and eliminating others and then we're going to build the horizontal uh, sorry the vertical connections between these horizontal strips yeah which is going to be like the the grid shell basically and we're going to work in different layers for that so first of all let's talk about how can we select a particular layer yeah or actually one more thing i'm going to just a second i think I think I will I will uh, flip last the flip last component actually do use it uh, through the path mapper I will show you uh, how it works the path map basically uh, the flip last it's it's a component from uh, heteroptera plugin which is one of the best uh, plugins like for grasshopper one of the most uh, useful let's say and uh, we can use either flip last or we can do it manually in the path mapper for that, we need just to uh, actually actually is it flip last? No, it's not flip last. It's actually just flip uh, A and B. Yeah, let's just do this. Let's change B and A. Slightly different operation, guys. Sorry, my bad. Uh, yeah. So now you see uh, our structure now is uh, if we use the param viewer again. I always keep using the prime viewer because it gives us the complete information about the about the structure. Okay, you see now it's organized in, as as three basically large branches, and each of them bifurcates into eighteen more branches. Yeah, each uh, large branch represents a layer, like layer zero, layer one, and layer two, which are the internal, middle, and external layers. So. Uh, yeah, that's that's it. That's what we need. And now let's let's talk about how how are we um, actually creating each particular each particular layer. How can we select a particular layer set? For that, we need to use the split tree component. Yeah, I connect it directly to the path mapper. And let's say if I want to select the layer number zero, see what all these elements have in common. They always have the number zero as the first figure in their path. Yeah. And 
it requires a mask from me. So I'm going to just create a panel. I'm going to uh, put zero, semicolon, and then I put the star. Right? The star means that any number. So I will be selecting those numbers that, uh, that follow this mask, which means that the first figure in this, uh, in this branch is zero, and second is whatever, like anything. You see, and this selects all the elements. Why is it happening here? Whoa. Uh, well, that's really weird. One second. Why is it doing this? Um, I guess it's a bug because I don't see any, any reason for that. Okay, one second. So, sure, we can try it. Okay, one second. Let me, guys, just try and try it here. And uh, oh, okay, that's 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 good. Sorry, guys. I don't I don't know what is it. Let me try to change the shape a little bit because. Sometimes it happens, but to be honest, I have no idea why. Seems like there is no space for, for error, but it happens. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Sorry, just a sec. Um, hmm. It, that's actually that's actually good, 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 good exercise to learn how to how to check for mistakes. Let's see, uh, we have the shutter. I'm gonna check the length of uh, of the of each uh, list. I'm gonna create that. And it's always 18 numbers. Wow, that's that's, that's really weird. It looks like. It has these uh, elements and it has them here, but for some reason here it doesn't help. Uh, okay, so mm -hmm. I still think it's, it comes from the geometry, but let me try to find this with this uh, number and maybe maybe we'll sort it out. Ah, yeah, you see, now it's one. Okay, I, I don't know why, guys, but sometimes it happens with, uh, with even with Grasshopper. Yeah, okay. I don't know why, honestly, <laughs> but uh, if it works, it works. So, okay, great. Uh, I guess it's like the back of the problem. Okay, no problem. So let's let's move on. Uh, we see that we have uh, selected all the all the um, all the how you say it all the strips from one layer, right? So let's just in advance let's create split tree for each of these layers. Yeah. Here let's use uh, one. Now it's for us to use that pattern as a stencil. We are going to select different or same uh, strips from different la la layers, right? We can do it like that. First of all, before that, I'm going to I'm actually going to group the strip, yeah. Before here, after this path mapper, I'm going to group them. Uh, actually, first I'm going to connect this to group, and I'm going to connect this to group as well. Yeah, like this. So you see now, now uh, I have 18 element, 18 um, elements, because now this strip. From the data management point of view, it's now treated as one element, as one group. But this group, if I ungroup it, it will still consist of eleven separate meshes. Why am I doing this? I'm doing this in order not to not to weld the mesh, not to join it, but still to have it as one element, right? It's grouping. It's the same as in Rhino. You just group um, a set of objects or values. In this case, it's objects on the geometry, not values. But uh, that's it. So, uh, and now I want to actually start uh, cooling these strips one by one and to generate this pattern. I'm going to work 
with layer number zero at the beginning, these two layers there, I'm gonna keep it for keep them for the for the for the later stages. But for the moment, I'm going to work with these uh, branches. Yeah. Let's generate a very simple pattern to cool certain uh, branches from here. Yeah. So uh, let's let's use tree statistics to actually to actually retrieve the, the paths. Let's start generating the pattern for uh, the path cooling. I'm going to use the uh, let's use the split tree again. This time, instead of uh, typing it manually, we will generate it via an algorithm. So how are we going to do this? Well, we need just to use the cool pattern to cool certain. I'm going to hide this. Yeah, this and this I'm going to hide, and I'm going to hide. The, uh, no, I'm gonna hide this, and yeah, that's it, and the curves. I'm gonna hide everything which was before, like this. I'm gonna keep the last uh, part. Work with the shell number zero, uh, sorry, it's, uh, layer number zero, and I'm going to cool these these uh, patterns, uh, sorry, these paths with the cool pattern component. I'm gonna connect it to M, and I'm gonna connect this to D to data. And now you see I'm left with these strips. Yeah, I preserve only them. It's nice. I mean, it's already something. I don't want to have them. I want to have. Uh, I want to have only the corners. Basically, I need to have this strip and this strip, and in the middle, I want to have some more randomness. So I'm going to assemble this pattern manually, not manually, but semi-manually. Let's say. I'm going to use merge. I'm going to make sure they preserve the first and the last strips in this in this uh, shell in this layer. I'm gonna say I'm gonna use a Boolean toggle, and I'm gonna set it at true for the D D one and for the D three. If we, if we zoom in, we add uh, we can add uh, more inputs to, to the merge component, yeah. And for D two, I'm going to generate a pattern sequence which will be generated by the algorithm. How are we gonna do this? Well, again, relatively simple. Let's use the um, let's use the um, um uh, yeah let's 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 take this number the count and let's use the subtraction let's subtract two from this component two because we don't need the end and, and the beginning and start right we need to have only those uh those elements that are in between yeah so for our pattern it's be as long as the number of branches that we have here yeah so I'm gonna just subtract two. And actually, uh, yeah, I'm just gonna use the two for the moment. It's gonna be just this. Okay, I'm gonna connect. I'm gonna use it as as the length of my my random pattern. And how am I gonna gen how how, I, how am I going to generate my random pattern? I'm going to use the random component. Yeah, which is pretty much speaks for, which pretty much speaks for itself. For the range, I'm going to use uh, something from uh, from zero. I'm going to construct domain. Here, I'm basically generating how many strips am I going to remove between them? So, how wide will these gaps be? Does it make sense? I hope so. Uh, sorry, I, I, I forgot that um, I don't see the chat. <laughs> uh, if if any question, if there are any questions, guys, please please let me know. Uh, Anton and Mustafa, please tell me if I need to explain something. Length of these gaps is going to be from one to three. It's going to be random. Um, so for the number, I'm going to use the I don't know any number. It just has to be longer than this, or at least like this. So I'm going to connect count. It doesn't matter which number. It just has to be not not smaller than this. One. Uh, yeah, and then I'm going to use the repeat data. I'm going to do the mm -hmm. yeah. I'm going to use a duplicate data. So why am I using the duplicate data? Because here I don't I don't want to type if I want to let's say if I want to get rid of two branches I don't want to type it manually I don't want to connect the false boolean twice. I want to do it automatically. So I just say false right. I create the boolean toggle. I connect it here. Data. 
I have true for n and I, I have false twice. Yeah. And I want to repeat, I want to actually repeat this pattern. I want to have false and then one true. Yeah. Let me show you a simpler example and then we will move on. So first I'm going to make something like this. Yeah, it's going to be false twice and then true once. I am connecting it here. I'm connecting it to data. Yeah, and I have to flatten it. Yeah, I have to flatten the input. Very important so that they, they both go uh, one after another. So we have two falses first and we have one true after that. So we have false, false, true. Yeah. And I'm going to repeat data and the length of this thing. I'm going to use this subtraction, which is 18 minus 2, which is basically the length of uh, like this level uh, minus the ends of, of these uh, curve, of these uh, branches. Yeah. So, and then if I connect it here, and if we connect it to the pattern, uh, yeah, we need to flatten it as well. All the inputs have to be flattened. Yeah. You see the pattern I get, right? Actually, sorry, my bet the start is from here. So we have true, false, false, true, false, false, true, false, false, and so on until it reaches the length of this pattern. And in the end, we have true, false. That's it, because the length of the pattern was like this. This length was like that. Yeah. So I, I, I hope I hope it's really clear. Yeah. But now what am what am I doing with this randomness? I'm actually creating more. Uh, more, um, we say, more randomness, more variety, basically, right? I'm going to, I'm going to keep this option as well, just for you to have it, yeah, like that. I'm going to generate this other, other option as well, which is going to be more random and which is going to be our final one, yeah. So, okay, great. Uh, I'm going to. Say, uh, so here we have this number. Okay, I'm going to copy the duplicate data with a false here and I'm going to connect it to n. So now I have, uh, sorry, yeah, you see, I have a tree. I have a tree which consists of three false, like false, 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 then another branch is false, false, another branch is false, another is again false three times, and so on. It's like a completely, I mean, it's not completely random. It has some algorithms behind it, but for us, it looks completely random. It looks pseudo random for us as humans, right? So uh, let's, let's, now, now, now we need to put, uh, now we have to put um, true every time after, after every particular branch. Yeah? So how, how am I going to do this? Let, let's actually think about it. How, how, how are we going to do it? We need to, Place one, uh, place two once after each, after each branch here. So let's let's do the following. Let's uh, let's say, uh, yeah, let's uh, let's let's duplicate through as many times as the number of branches we have here. So I'm going to say duplicate beta again. I'm gonna put through. Duplicate date. I'm going to use the same count as here. It, now, now it's important to use the same number for for the duplicate data. For, so, sorry, for the duplicate data here as for the randomness. Yeah. Okay. And uh, yeah, I'm going to graph it. So that here now for each branch here, I have a branch here. Yeah. And then I'm going to simplify it. Graph and simplify, and I'm going to merge them. Let's let's see what do we get as a result. I create a panel, and you see we have this pattern: false, 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 true. Then again, false, false, true. Then false, true. False, 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 true, and so on. You see, so we, we basically place one true after each set of false uh, values. Yeah. And after that, I just need to flatten it and to D, because this D will repeat as long. As the length of my uh, like of this space, yeah. So I have sixteen strips to play with, and it is going to be repeated until it reaches the pattern reaches its length. You see, so here we have fifty-one value. As long as this pattern is sixteen, 
it's like it's like using the shortest list, right? It basically repeats until it reaches the length and then it stops. Yeah, so that's it. That's it, guys. We we can generate a random pattern here. We can, we can play with the seed of the randomness to generate different patterns, as you can see, right? Now we select different different traits. Yeah. Almost there actually. We, we just now, now we just need to start. Um, uh, actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna hide everything before. I'm gonna keep only the end. Now what we need to do? We need to actually generate the horizontal uh, connections from the from the other layer, right? But uh, actually, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna change this split tree. The, 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 the split tree which we we're operating on. I'm gonna make it the external one. I'm gonna put. Sorry, I'm gonna put two here. Yeah. Why am I doing this? Because if if you have seen the, the, the I mean, I'm pretty sure you have uh, the poster. You saw that the pylons they they are the most protruded to to, to the to the. Uh, outside, right? So this is going to be the outermost layer. The, the horizontal connections they are going to be going to be located in the interior and middle layers, right? Okay, so uh, what are we going to do next? Uh, next, we are going to we are going to use the split tree. This is the very same split tree for the next layer, which is layer one and a star. I'm connecting the positive to D here, right? And I will preview this on. Uh, okay. Just a moment. Ah, okay, see. This and. Aha, uh -huh, yeah. Uh, right, so now you see that this, this, we need to use the same pattern for this um, split tree. You see that this pattern uses different paths than this one. Yeah. So how can we actually fix this? Uh, we can just replace this uh, uh, the number in these paths, and we, we can play with the text because okay, let me show you. Here we get these paths, right? We get the paths two, zero, two, 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 four, two, eight, and so on. So the only number which we need to change to make this mask valid for the other shell is the first number, right? Uh, there are different ways to operate on this. Uh, one of them might be to deconstruct the path, or maybe we can just use the split text. Or text split, I don't. Yeah, text split, let's use it. Uh, yeah, let's use this and let's uh, let's use the um, this thing here. Or actually, let me check one more thing. Maybe we can use some some faster thing. Uh, yeah, just for you for you guys to know, this is located in tab called sets and sub tab called text. Um, okay, I'm going to use the replace text component, right? So here, you see, we have the text operate on, which is going to be our path. We have the fragment to replace. In this case, it's going to be two. Yeah, because, because we need to re change it from layer number two to layer number one. Yeah. And you see, immediately we change, we get the same mask, but we change it for, this, for the first layer. And now, you see, basically apply the same pattern to, to another layer and we just uh, we just um, we just uh, create uh, sa same pattern. we make sure that they will match 100% we are absolutely sure about this great and now, now we just need to, to do to do um, another thing for the, for this first layer so the first layer we need also to generate these we also need to generate these uh, horizontal parts right so, uh, how are we going to do this? Well, let's uh, let's actually think about it. Let's um, mm, what, is, what, what would be the fastest way? Fastest way will be just to keep the negative here. If I connect a geometry container to negative, I will keep everything which is between 
these uh, pylons, right? And now I want to generate a random pattern for each of these uh, gaps between, yeah? So I want this gap to be like true, false, 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 true, false, 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 and so on. This gap, I want to have another pattern and so on. So I just want to do the same, but now in the other direction, yeah? But well, it's not going to be exactly the same, but it's going to be very similar. First of all, I need to ungroup these uh, these uh, groups because yeah, because I want to play with this um, yeah, with this with this, uh, uh, with, with the horizontal with, with the if we look from the top, it's horizontal direction, yeah. Like this. So. Uh, and now I, I, I also need to make sure that the two uh, gaps, that, uh, sorry, the two, uh, yeah, the two strips inside this gap that are located next to each other, they share the same pooling pattern. So that we have this, then like this, like this, so they don't have like a chest or something else, which will not make sense in, in terms of topology. You know? So I, I, let's say I want to have this edge, so I want this edge to always have the balance of two. I don't want to beat naked, this middle edge. So how can we achieve this? Well, uh, let's, let's actually do, let's actually, um, yeah, let's ungroup it and let's start preparing the pattern. Well, one option can be just to create a, to use a cool pattern here, you yeah. know, just merge and just say, okay, I want, uh, like this is like, I'm showing the, the simple way to do it. We can say, um, once and then we can say duplicate data and use uh, false uh, three times for example or four times or as many as we want like this and let's not let's not forget to flatten everything and let's connect it to the cool pattern so you see we generate this kind of grid, yeah? Really, really simple. Uh, again, I, I, the same thing as we did before, I want to keep the first and the last so that we have this kind of frame of the first item and last item. So again, for the last and first, I'm going to use the true true, and in the middle, I need to create this pattern, which is going to be random as well. So. I'm going to connect it to, uh, I'm going to actually to disconnect this for the moment and connect it here. Now it's time for, 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 for me to generate this uh, kind of, um, this, um, this uh, duplicate data in the, in, in the middle. And I'm going to use the repeat data again. Like, like basically I'm going to do the same as we did before, but this time for, for, the, for the other direction. Yeah. So, uh, okay, let's let's think how we're gonna do this. First of all, uh, let's let's see what numbers we receive here. Let's use the integer. You remember the, the ra random component that we used here? Let's connect an integer to this random component. And let's use the panel to see which numbers we receive. So how many how many uh, how many strips we have in one kind of gap? Yeah, you know what I mean. So that here the gap is. It consists of one strip. This consists of two strips. Two strips, uh, sorry, three strips, two strips, two strips, and one strip as well. Yeah? Pretty simple, I think. So, actually, uh huh. Uh, just one thing. Okay, guys, yeah, the problem here is that. Or yeah, that's actually a very good point that we made this mistake. I that I made this mistake. Uh, for the replace text, you see it replaced both two twos here. Yeah, so we need probably we need to use another component. Uh, let's do the. Uh, Ivan, I will jump in. Uh, I think uh -huh. for this uh, particular purpose, it's better to use the construct path. And then we replace the second index in the uh, in the list. It's, yeah, that's actually a very good idea. Okay, yeah, uh, thanks, uh, thanks, Anton. Uh, I will use the deconstruct. Not, not second, but first, first item. Yeah, first. Yeah. 
So let's let's use the deconstruct path. You see, uh, the deconstruct path basically it gives us the, the numbers, right? Like the first and the second numbers in the in the in the path. And uh, we need to replace the first item from two to one. So let's let's use the replace item. Replace items here. We use this as list. We replace the first, which is like zero, uh, the index zero. We replace it by one. Index zero response for uh, sorry is is um, responsible for the first uh, element in our path, which is two, right? We change it to one. And after that, I can connect this. Uh, sorry, I need to I need to construct path now because now I have only lists of um, of data and I need to convert it into a path. So now you see we deconstruct this path. Right after deconstruction we get this and after construction we get this and I connect it here. So now yes, now it's correct. Uh, not this, but this and this, they match. You see? This is very important to have it matching. Great. Okay, let's, let's move on. Let's uh, get back actually to the, to the cool pattern uh, of, the, of, the horizon, of the vertical connections here in, be in, between the uh, in between the pylons. We are going to make some more connections. Let's uh, yeah, let's do, let's let's move on. I'm going to, going to keep it here. I'm going to actually group this part, and let's let's see how we proceed. Okay, so let's get back to random. Yeah, you see that here we have this kind of length of the gap, the width of the gap. It consists of one string, one uh, sorry, one strip, one strip, three strips, two strips, two strips, and so on. So uh, we need to have this uh, kind of, uh, we need to use these numbers to actually generate our patterns, yeah, here. So we need to make sure that for this gap we can have a pattern which is like false, uh, sorry, true, false, 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 true, false, and so on. For this gap we can have another pattern. For this gap, for all three of them, we need to have the same pattern, right? This is, this is probably one of the most uh, one of the trickiest parts of this exercise. So I'm going to go really slow on this now, so that we all understand how this how this works. Because it takes a lot of attention. Not maybe not so much understanding, but a lot of attention. So again, let's let's start unwrapping this uh, task from from the from the end. What do we need to create? We need to create a, a pattern, which will be like true. Then in between it will be absolutely random, and then it will be true in the end. But in between we need to have a complete randomness. So this means already that we understand that we need to use the repeat data, right, for this particular operation. And in each particular case, the length of this uh, pattern will be as long as the as the strip minus two elements, minus the start and the end, right? So technically, it's again, it's like uh, we pick the uh, we use three statistics. Again. This time we can connect it to to the negative uh, here. Oh, sorry, to ungroup, and we get the lengths. And this time we need to connect all these lengths here. And we actually, need, I think, we need to graft it. Yeah, like that. So you see. And sorry, not length, but length minus two. Again, we need to use a subtraction and subtract two. By two, actually, we use the end and the start. And the start. Oh, sorry, we, we don't need the end and the start. We need to use everything which is between them. So this gives us 21, 21, 21, 21, and so on, right? Instead of 23. Great. And now we need all. We also need to use the data. Like the, 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 we need to use a certain pattern here. Now the pattern is going to be a bit more complicated, but still it's completely doable. So let's let's move on. Let's use let's create a random again, and let's say that okay, our our the height of our sorry not the height but the, the length of our gaps in uh, horizontal direction, which is uh, let me hide this thing. Let me hide this thing as well. 
So the height like is going to be either two, like this this square or this rectangle or this rectangle. So let, let's put it from two to four. Let's say construct domain connected to R, which is the range, and I'm going to type two and four. And for the number, uh, the, the, the number of, of the values that, that again we, we, it doesn't matter. It just has to be not lo not shorter than the length of the path. So let's let's just connect this here. And as a result, you see we generate a sequence of values. Yeah, like this. Okay. So uh, what are we going to do next? Uh, first of all, I'm going to move this a little bit, and then uh, and this goes here. Let's duplicate the data we don't need anymore. And now we need to start duplicating our data as many times as these numbers, right? So we, we, we again we have to, to connect it here and we need to say false. I'm gonna use the Boolean uh, toggle with false. I'm gonna connect it here. So you see our 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 tree structure now looks like that. We have four falses, right? So this means that here we have we'll have False, 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 so on, right? Here we have three and so on, yeah. Uh, but actually, uh, actually, not really, not really like this. One more thing, uh, one more thing is uh, we need to, as I was mentioning before, we need to make sure that this pattern, sorry, this pattern, for example, is the same as this and the same as this, right? So they are like the same. If it removes one from here and then keeps this, it should be all, uh, the same for all of them. So in this particular case, we need to um, yeah let, let, let me let me show how to do this. So we need to use these numbers from here as the yeah, as as the the, the uh, figure of how many how many times we are going to to, to to use this pattern. So I'm going to create um, yeah, uh, I get it. So here we have uh, 230 items. Okay. Uh, yeah, let let let's use not length, but let's use count instead here. Yeah, because we have ten, we have uh, ten branches, right? It's even, even better. We have ten branches here, and for each branch, we, have, we need to have a pattern. But these three branches we need to have the same pattern, right? Sorry for being repetitive, but I really want you guys to understand this part because even I get confused sometimes when I work with this. It's, it's like not very intuitive, let's say. Uh, and then we are going to use these numbers as the size of the partition list, right? So we have ten. 10, uh, 10, uh, uh, yeah, 10 values, and we need to duplicate each of these values first, right, as many times as these numbers. So we need to say shortest list, or actually, one second, uh, one second. Uh, this is the data. Okay, ten times. So it uh, length is ten. Uh, it doesn't matter actually. We can just use these these values as the duplicate data. Yeah. So you see, uh, actually not. Sorry, one second. Uh, three, two. Uh, this pattern should be duplicated as many times. Sorry guys, I got confused for a second. Just just a moment. Um, one, 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 three. So we need to we need to use this uh, this pattern once, this pattern once, this pattern three times. So first of all, I think we need to generate. I think we need to generate this pattern and then to duplicate it. Uh, okay. So just a second. Um, yeah, these are the numbers we need to use. So I need to. Okay. Okay, so okay, let's let's start from creating this thing like this, like three uh -huh, here. 
let's use this as number no of course this needs to be as number and then we need to use the false as a boolean here right and then we need to duplicate each um, each pattern has to be duplicated as many times as this number so we need to create patterns and then start duplicating them so let's let's uh, use merge let's duplicate uh, 10 times craft it you see we, we use uh, 10 we use uh, we have 10 branches of different length consisting of false boolean and 10 branches of one two boolean right and we, and we connect it here so you see as, 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 a, as an output we get this yeah like false 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 true false and these are the patterns for different branches so we need to make sure that this that the first pattern goes for this branch second second branch goes for this branch and then the third branch from here has to go for three branch for three of these branches yeah so we need to duplicate each of these branches so okay how, how are we gonna do this uh let's let's um, think which which way would be the easiest um i think we need to yeah we actually need to okay so we need to duplicate this this once this once and this three times yeah i got it so uh, now we need to duplicate data inside these merge components and we need to duplicate the data as many times as we have it here yeah so let's let's uh, use number here and let's actually graft it yeah so first of all i'm going to say uh yeah simplify here simplify here and then i'm going to use a tool which is called uh filter unmatched so that now we have this you see we keep only those paths which are the same which are shared by these uh things okay so here we have here we have the number of how many times will this pattern be duplicated and here we have uh the pattern itself so let's connect the data and let's connect this here and let's see you see it gets duplicated as many times as length so it's like this so this this pattern is duplicated once right like it's false 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 true the next pattern which is false 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 true is duplicated once again and the, the next pattern this one is duplicated three times you see it's false false true false false true false false true right so it's false false true false false true false false true we get the same pattern for all three of these elements right and now the only thing which is left is just to partition them for three different branches so that each of these patterns like this pattern goes for this branch this pattern goes to this branch and this pattern goes to this branch so now we need to use the partition list so i connect this data to l and i need to use um, these numbers right these numbers as the size of the partitions sorry, sorry not not these numbers but actually the the least length here because here each each pattern has a different length right so i'm going to use it as a partition and then if we connect this to this panel you see what we have so this part which is represented by nine elements here is converted into three three separate branches which is false false true false false true false false true right this is it now we make sure we made sure that uh, each pattern is um, it, it, it follows each um, branch so how, how are we gonna do it now uh, now we just need to apply these patterns to these branches that's it so again i'm gonna use the okay so we, we have this uh this kind of uh what is it this merge here yeah like this we have it with true and something in the middle so true in the beginning true in the end something in the middle this is the part which is 
basically something in the middle. So let's let's connect it here. And here, as you can see, we have 10, 10 branches. So let's connect it here, like this. Yeah. Actually, not like this. We need to say uh, filter unmatched again. Actually, let, let me check if we have to do this or not. Yeah, I think so. Uh, okay, so now we need to say uh, we need to renumber the paths. Because you see here, if 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 I graphed these numbers, right? We get some some uh, paths which are one one zero zero one one zero one and so on. And here we have we have a different, uh, completely different maths, right? So we need to renumber them. We need to make them the same, and keep the, those which match, right? So I'm gonna do this, and I'm gonna filter. So you see now this structure is zero one two three and so on, and here it is as well zero one two three. But this this three is longer than this one. So by doing filter unmatched, I make sure that I keep only those which are shared by both of them, and I apply it here. Yeah. And then if I connect it, uh, actually, do we need to flatten it? I uh, don't think so. Here we have this. Uh -huh. Okay, so let's see what, what, what is this pattern. And, oh, sorry, one second. Why is it like that? Sorry, my bad is it should be, it should be one, it should be this. Uh, so you see now we have we have different patterns, but like, right? Like here we have it, this pattern, the four times false, one times true, it's repeated as long as many times as the length of this list, right? And then another pattern is apply, is uh, repeated as many times as the length of this list here, right? So this is, this is exactly what we wanted to achieve. Now, the only thing which we need to uh, bear in mind now is that first I need to say principle to this renumbered structure, right? And then I also need to say um, I also need to not not to flatten it here because uh, it will kill our data structure basically. I need to make sure that this true is also uh, repeated as many times as uh, the number of branches I have here. So first of all, we need to for this true we need to duplicate it as many times as the number of branches we have, which is n right the count because we need to have one true per one branch right in the beginning and one true per one branch in the end so i can just connect this to d1 and d3 and also not to forget i need to renumber these paths here like that like this and then the final thing i need to connect this repeat data here so yeah and i need to also to simplify everything yes so you see we have this pattern specific for each gap and if i now uh connect not this but actually it's this i use this layer uh geometry like that yeah and this cool pattern. You see, this is the grid we get as a result. Yeah. A bit of, of, of um, how do you say it? A bit of complexity here. I don't want to pretend that it's easy, it's not. But um, yeah, but again, I'm not doing it for the sake of complicating it. I'm doing it just to have the control of this of this um, geometry and the, the best part about this is that we can we can change the let's say we can we can automatically say okay i want to have another seed i want to have another pattern you see i want i can i can change it at any point i can make it larger smaller you see and this is done automatically no need to type anything no need to copy anything no need for any manual work anymore right Although it took us a bit of uh, a bit of time to think about it, but how to how to design it, but now it's all parametric. It's all parametric, yeah. Great. So uh, what is left now? Now uh, the only thing we have to apply is um, uh, we have to apply it to the to the last level, which is the 
innermost level, which is the interior one. I'm gonna delete all this. And uh, yeah, let's uh, let's um, just let's just apply the same uh, the same. Uh, let's let's just do the bridging between these two la layers, right? So like, well, let's make this bridging. How are we gonna do this? Well, uh, I'm gonna just actually I'm going to ungroup the first level, which is a layer, which is the outermost. I'm going to say ungroup. So that each mesh becomes a separate item. We're almost there, guys. We're almost done. And I'm going to say weld mesh. Weaver bird join meshes and weld. This is a component which allows us to join and weld the mesh at the same time. Yeah, so we get eight meshes. Just in case if it didn't weld properly, I'm going to use the weld mesh vertices component. And in the end, I'm going to say unify mesh normals. Like this. And of course, I'm going to do the same for, for the same strips from the previous layer. Yeah? Just, just the same operation. Actually, it's already ungrouped, so we can just say uh, we will river bird join meshes and weld, uh, river uh, weld mesh vertices, and not this, but yeah, but this. Actually, no, we need to ungroup it as well. Here, here, and this. that's it. Great. And now, now let's use the let's create the bridge between these two shells, and let's connect them all in one. Let's join them all in one one uh, sub -deep after that. First of all, I'm using the Weaver Bird uh, naked boundary from here. Yeah. This gives me the, the naked uh, boundary of each of the meshes, and here as well. I'm gonna hide this, and I'm left with these two. I'm left with these two sets of curves. I'm gonna explode them. And now we are left with this uh, segment. So I need just to say craft. Craft and as we did with the strips, now I'm going to do the rule surfaces. Make the rule surfaces like that, yeah. That's it, guys. You see? That's it. So now I just need to convert it into a simple mesh. And need to assemble this mesh together. So it's basically this geometry, this geometry, and this geometry. That's it. Let's let's just uh, say merge for the last time for this exercise. Let's connect this ungrouped component to this simple mesh, which is the bridge, and to this cool pattern, which uh, was the uh, the horizontal connections. Yeah. So let's flatten this all. It's important to flatten now. We flatten only in the very end. Now we don't care about the data structure. We need to have it all as one single mesh. We do the same operation as we did here. We weld it, we, uh, we join it, we weld it, and then we unify the normals. Yeah, that's it. Like that. I'm gonna preview this on, uh, hide everything which was before. And then we apply the sub D, sub D from mesh, yeah. Let's hide this. Uh, why didn't it work? Uh, mm, 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 mm. Ah, got it. Okay, you see here we have two uh, strips connected. Yeah. So what we need to do here before we actually do this, I would I would suggest to uh, to flatten it. Yeah. Uh, let's let's actually disable this part. You see, when we have such cases like here, like we have two strips and each strip is a separate branch, we have to first uh, weld them all together, yeah, so that they become one mesh. 
and then we actually have to uh, say disjoint mesh. Disjoint mesh will create will make uh, all the meshes which are not uh, connect, which are not physically connected. It will make them separate, right? So we just did disjoint meshes and we weld it after that. And we use this uh, the resulting geometry as bridges. So there. Uh, now you see we get these bridges, right? So we don't have this this non-manifold edge here, non-manifold face, sorry. Yeah, and then we just uh, enable it again, and I hide everything which was before, and we are left with this fancy shape. Yeah. The last part uh, is we can right-click here on uh, the uh, Corners, and we can say that it should be uh, should stay um, sharp at the corners. That's it. And in the end, I'm going just to apply the custom preview and see how this looks like in, let's say, Arctic mode. This is it, guys. Well, yeah, that's really good. <laughs> Okay, and, uh, uh, could you send me this code? Uh, of course, of course. And we can continue with the... Uh, uh, sorry, if you, could, if, you could, if you could stop sharing my screen, please, I will just send it to Anton and we will continue. Yeah? Okay, great. Okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. just let me send it to Anton and uh, mm -hmm. we'll continue. Okay, great. So, yeah, one sec. Okay, guys, in the meantime, please uh, put your questions in the chat, uh, or you can rewatch re some part of it if, if, if necessary. Uh, I will be here to answer your questions. And um, in the meantime, Anton is uh, going to show you one more exercise, which is going to be way, uh, I think, way more fun and <laughs> not as not as uh, complicated as the last part of this one. So Yes, for sure. <laughs> uh, okay. Well, first of all, I'll share my screen. Mm -hmm. And I will open the file that Ivan just sent me. Okay, uh, let's see. Here it is. Okay, great. Here in this file, I will need just the part. Uh, right before uh, tree split, where we already have our surfaces. So um, let's start right from from tree split. I'll remove everything that goes behind. And uh, what I once did, it's good, it's amazing. Uh, but what if you want to get something even more complex? Uh, it's going to be quite hard to achieve it uh, in a manual way, we just did. So um, I propose to use patterns, pre prefabricated patterns in this case, <laughs> pre-done patterns. So, and this uh, is what we're going to do now. Let's, let's create a pattern first, and then we will apply it to these amazing surfaces. I will turn off the preview for the surfaces. And I'll go to the top view of my Rhino viewport. So in this top view, I will create a simple rectangle just in Rhino. And I'll start writing my code somewhere here. OK, uh, I will start the, with the references of this uh, reference of this curve to the grasshopper using curve component. And inside this uh, boundary, I will create um, a mesh plane. I'm going to the mesh, uh, primitive mesh plane. I connect my boundary. And I will create pattern with five by five 
grid with five by five uh, squares. It's going to be easy to work with. Something like this. Then I'm going to use uh, mesh edit plugin to explode my mesh to the separate separate um, squares, separate separate mesh faces, and I will enumerate every face using uh, enumerate component from uh, GitHub Terra. I'm going to uh, GitHub Terra, select object enumerator, and you can see numbers of every face on your screen. Now uh, let's create a pattern. I'm going to uh, represent this pattern with uh, colors. So uh, I'll go to the custom preview. Oh, actually, yeah, I will select uh, color RGB with F in the brackets. Mm -hmm. And I could create a sequence of numbers. For now, all the numbers are going to be zeros. Zero will represent uh, false or non-selected face. I will call for the panel with number zero. Uh, then I will repeat uh, my zero. Uh, the exact time, how many faces I have in my mesh. So let's uh, count them using list length component. And I connect it to the lens. Okay, now if I check my button uh, like this and uh, with mesh colors component, we will see face colors, that every face is black now. Actually, I can see object enumerator now, and I will replace it with a different component, which works uh, better on the dark colors. Uh, it's a uh, point list. I will find the center of each uh, mesh face using area component, and connect it to the point list like this. And in large numbers, uh, let's say, yeah, now you can see them properly. Good. Uh, when it's done, I'll need to replace some zeros with uh, ones with true value uh, in order to create the actual pattern. Uh, I'm using replace items component. I connect my repeat data. The item I'm going to replace with is one, number one, or two. And indexes, I'm going to write them down. So first, I will reconnect RGB colors to replace items. And I will start select certain faces of the mesh. I will call for the panel. I will turn off multi-lane data. And let's start. Uh, first is going to be zero. Uh, yeah, we need to graft mesh faces and mesh colors in order to preview them properly. Like this. OK, after zero, I will put one, and three, and four. Uh, after four, let's put six. Let's see what's happening. Okay. Uh, the next row is going to be 10, 11, 13, and 14 for me. 10, 11, 13, 14. Something like this. And the two last rows, it's going to be 18 and 23. You're free to use any pattern you want. You can even enlarge the uh, number of faces in uh, X and Y directions to make it them uh, more complex. But for now, we're going to work uh, with something like this. OK, once it's done, I need to uh, 
partition my flat list into certain branches. And each branch uh, should be a row of mesh faces, something like this. So I will use partition list to do this. But as a list, I connect a pattern from replace items. And as the size of the pattern, I will connect uh, my number from mesh plane. Actually, the number of uh, uh, mesh faces in a row. So I have five, then it should be five. Okay, and as a result, I've got uh, a data tree with uh, five branches and five items in each branch. If you have not, non, uh, not a square, but uh, a rectangle, you should um, check how many faces you have in one row. Okay, now when pattern is done, we're ready to apply it to our surfaces. Let's see, um, in this exercise, we will need only uh, two layers of the structure. I'll take uh, layer number uh, zero, the lowest one, and the one above it. Yeah, and uh, layer number two, we don't need at the moment. Okay, let's see uh, what data structure we have here. We have groups with 23 objects. Uh, and I will need to ungroup them first. I use an ungroup component for each of the split three components. Let's do it like this. Mm -hmm. 23, 23. Perfect. Okay, great. Uh, uh -huh. Yes. 1.3, uh, let's check the data structure once again. So I have 18 branches with 23 items in each. Mm -hmm. That's perfect, that's what I need. And uh, to get this data for the pattern, I will use uh, the component you already know, the tree statistics, which will give me the actual uh, number of branches and number of items per branch. Uh, they are the same, so I need to use it only once in order to repeat my pattern as many times as many branches I have and as many times as many uh, items in branch I have. Okay, uh, I'll move it closer and let's start duplicating our pattern. So uh, first of all, I will use three statistics again. for the partition list I've just made. It's important. And with this, uh, I'll get every name of the branch I have. And first of all, I will duplicate these branches, these uh, branch passes, in order to get these branches later. So uh, let's do repeat. Repeat data. Uh, passes, branch passes are gonna be my data. And the length is going to be equal to the number of branches for the surface. So I just connect this count output from three statistics I just made. Okay, and I had 18 branches. I have 18 branches repeated in a sequence. Uh, now let's retrieve these branches from the partition list. I'm going to use three branch component. I connect my partition list to the uh, tree input. Then I connect my passes to the pass input. And the most important part here, you can see you have still have five branches, but we need to have 18. And to do this, I need to uncheck maintain pass. I need to renumber my tree. So I right click on tree branch and I uncheck maintain pass. And if I check the data structure right now, uh, let's use around cuber again, you will see that my data has 18 branches with five elements 
in each branch. So we match the count of branches right now for the pattern and for the surface. And we need to do the very same thing, but already with uh, items inside every branch. So let's do it. We're going to use again repeat component. Right now we have the same number of items per branch. So I will just select the first one using this item from the three statistics. And I connect it to repeat data. And again, we can check what we've got. We've got 23 items per branch with 18 branches. And it's uh, exactly what we needed. OK, so we duplicated our pattern as many times as many faces we have um, on our surface. Now let's continue and uh, let's use cool pattern because we have pattern to cool and we have our ungrouped layer, ungrouped surfaces to be cooled. And you see, you've got this pattern on top of the surface. Okay, uh, so right now we did it for the top layer, yeah, exactly, for the upper layer I had, and that's good, and I will do uh, the very same for the lowest layer, so I just uh, duplicate cool pattern, and I change the list to the bottom layer. It's great. Uh, let's see what, okay, we have mesh here and mesh here. Let's create uh, a connection in between, in between them. Uh, we will do it uh, using uh, combine and clean component. Let's connect it to the first cool pattern and to the second cool pattern. And don't forget to flatten it at the very beginning. So we have one single mesh pair um, per layer. OK, once it's done, I can extract the naked boundary. Let's do it using uh, Weaver Bird's naked boundary. I do it once, and I do the very same thing for the bottom part. Let me turn off every preview. Once we've got naked boundary, we can uh, shutter it, explode it into segments, into actual mesh edges. And which then we will loft. I, gra I graphed every explode, exploded segments outputs. And I'm using root surface. Even loft, it doesn't matter. Oops. No. Apparently it does. Okay. For the loft, I need a uh, merge component. 11, 11, 8, 11. Okay, okay. One second, please. Okay, before this, I guess I'll need to simplify the data structure. I have 18 here branches and 18 here. Okay, yeah, the thing we need to, needed to do is to simplify the ungrouped outputs to get rid of this uh, first number in the pass. So here is one. Here is one, right? And here is zero. One second. Yeah, it works. Yeah, cool. 
need to fail to collect data, that shouldn't be a problem. Okay, let's see the result. 11, 11, 8, 11. I'm still missing some. Mm. Missing some values. That's uh, not good. Let's see what's happening. Uh, using param viewer, I'll check the number of elements in every branch. It seems to be correct. 23 per branch and here 23 per branch as well. But what might be the problem? I don't know. Okay. Parameter L. Is this one right? Call any, any. Right. That should be fine. Totally fine. 23 per branch, 23 per branch. Okay. And here, 23 per branch. Yeah, that shouldn't be a problem. Let's see, maybe problem with naked boundary, which is most possible case. Yeah, I see. Yeah, for some reason it uh, wasn't welded properly. You can see this uh, naked additional naked edges edge on the top face. Let's weld it. I'm using weld vertices component here, and then connect my mesh back. And let's check right now. We got rid of this unnecessary naked edge. And here I I will do the same. Yep, now we have a clean naked boundary and it's going to be working properly. I just connect my merge component to the loft. Mm -hmm. And I've got this um, surfaces in between two, two layers. Let's uh, work a bit on these surfaces. I will subdivide them a bit. I'm going to use uh, parameter subdivide surface from uh, Pufferfish plugin. I will connect loft to the parameter subdivide and I will provide some values to U and V. So the first value I'll provide, uh, I'm gonna generate from range component. And with number of steps equals to one. And it's going to be, let's see, yes, no, sorry, it's going to be V, yes, it's going to be V. And for the U, I will create merge component. The first number of the merge component is going to be zero, because parameter zero is the start of the actual phase, of the actual mesh phase. And the last parameter is going to be one. Uh, D4 is going to be one, which is uh, actual end of the face. So I keep the face as it is, first of all. And then I develop D2 and D3. So uh, I'm going to define D2 using a slider from 0 to uh, 0 0.5. There's several decimals. Okay, four decimals. I connected to D2. And as for D3, I need to subtract this slider from one, actually from the end. I'm going to use just the same number one I did before. And I'm going to subtract this slider from it and connect it to D3. I'll put some value on the slider and I will connect merge to the U. And you see, we've got this uh, support loops for our sub D. Okay. Once it's done, uh, we're almost ready to assemble our sub D base mesh. 
let's add merge component. And first of all, I will put there in the merge component the very top face, the very top button I pulled, uh, this one. It doesn't matter if it's joint or unjoint, whatever, we will join it later. Then I will put um, the faces in between, the actual thickness. But first, I need to convert them into simple mesh. So I'm just using simple mesh component like this. And I connect it to merge. Mm -hmm. Once it's done, uh, I'm ready to connect one more layer, which is going to be the lowest one. But it has to be inverted. Let's see. So we have the lowest layer here. I will copy it once again, the cool pattern for the lowest layer. And I will simply invert the cool pattern here. Right click on cool pattern and press invert. And right now, if you preview, you will get everything else but the pattern. Simple like this. And I just connected back to the merge. So all together here in merge component. After it's done, I will flatten the output of the merge and combine and clean. Combine and clean everything. And just to be sure, I will weld vertices. Just to be sure my image is good. OK. And we're ready to apply sub D. I'm going to surface sub D, sub D from mesh. I connect it to sub D and let me preview it with colors. But before I need to turn off every unnecessary thing here. Yeah. And here you see our pattern on top of the surface. Let's play with the slider for the subdivision. And you will see you can make it smoother or sharper. Or even super smooth if you put zero. Also, uh, let's play with the size of this uh, actual surface. So right now we divide um, yeah, this one interpolated. Uh, we divide our curve in 18 pieces, but we can change this and you will see my pattern will, will change with this value. Let's put it a bit lower. Yeah, sort of like this. And let's play with the number of arches. So it's basically this number. No, 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 not really. This one, sorry, the distance. I think it's a step. Yeah, your pattern deforms with geometry. And we can also play a bit with the pattern itself. Let's add certain values mm, to the pattern. For example, I want to add number 2 and number 12. Let's check it out. So I will add 2 and 12 to my pattern. And you see, it changed. And now it's really nice. Really nice one. OK, and now I want to add 7. I'll put thicker connections in between these kind of openings. You can even apply several patterns to different layers. Or, I mean, um, different pattern to each layer. And you will get even uh, more complex shapes. 
Yeah, one more uh, thing. Let's try to change the offset of our curves. So it's uh, we're using D1 and D2. Yeah, I will increase D1. And my offset will become, my, my pattern will become deeper. Okay, and let's smooth it a bit. Yeah, or even super smooth. Let's go see. <laughs> super sharp. Yeah, I think it's cool. Uh, what do you think, guys? Please uh, leave us comments and uh, you can generate your patterns by yourself and you can share it with us. We'll be glad to post them on our Instagram page. Yes, thank you, Anton. I think this That's is pretty much it. <laughs> yeah, this looks very good, by the way. Yep, thank you. Arctic mode. Again, these uh, definitions may be needed. So, in any case, we are going to share it. And uh, please uh, come to this YouTube section and check it for the description links. Also, it will be all published on our website too. Now, we are going to announce it anyway. Uh, if you have any any questions that uh, you are going to ask that Anton, anyone, and me, we are going to try to answer your questions. <clears throat> also, we should uh, point out this these two webinars are again important uh, to prepare for the for the upcoming workshops. Uh, that's why we, we, we try to make it uh, recorded. Uh, maybe you would want to watch it once or twice because it will take some time. Okay, let's yes, wait. It's always too good to repeat. <laughs> yeah, let's wait a little more, like one to two minutes to see if there will be any questions. I think they will yeah, try actually, to yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. think a bit more. Yeah, the watch, the watch and we will be glad to answer it yeah, later. Yeah, exactly. And at the workshop, we will also show some, some other tricks. We are also going to, I, I think we are not going to go, uh, at least the first one, we're not going to go too much, uh, much more than today, but uh, we're going to show some other aspects such as uh, mm -hmm. creating creases, variable creases, variable hard edges, more subdivisions mm -hmm. and uh, more detailing of uh, what we made today. And uh, as, as mentioned before, we will apply it to some real architectural cases. It's going to be a two day workshop, so um, we'll have more time clearly. And uh, you will also be able to ask uh, questions like uh, and so on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It will be also, of course, it will be uh, a limited attendance. That should be said, I think. Definitely. Okay. Doesn't seem to be that there is going to be questions. Let's see what 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 uh, people are going to do with the with the recording. Mm -hmm. uh, after several time, I think the, there will be questions. If if so, you can drop us an email. Also, you can reach to Ingenerik directly uh, mm -hmm. through social media and and website and contact pages too. If you have anything to say, Anton, anyone, uh, we are listening to you guys. Then we are going to close. I think. So first of all, thank you all for watching us. It uh, was a good experience, I think. And uh, I hope we, you, you learned something new today. And we have much more to share with you uh, during our workshops and classes. Yeah. So please follow us, join us.
yeah, work with us. <laughs> Let us know if you have any questions or any ideas. Uh, we provide uh, consulting and everything. So like any any time, any moment, we uh, we're actually launching another grasshopper group in three days. But mm -hmm. yeah, okay, great. Thank you very much. Uh, any questions, please post it in the comments. We will be checking through them and uh, answering them as we see them. And it will also be nice for us to, to use these questions as um, to mention them during our workshops, basically, to, to improve them. Yeah, exactly. OK, I'm... OK, then um, we are going to see you again in, in the upcoming workshops uh, for now. Take care, guys, and thank you for watching. Thanks. Yeah. Thank, thank you. you. Bye. Bye. Bye.